G'day and welcome to Panel Beaters, the live car advice panel show filmed right here at the car advice office in Sydney. Stay right where you are for the latest car news plus your chance to win some cash. G'day guys, thank you for tuning in to Panel Beaters. We appreciate your time. Trent Nikolic, thank you for joining us as well. Mate, great to be here. I don't know who called this Panel Beaters. I reckon it should have been called Beaten Favourites. <laughs> I've always said that we've got good heads for radio, and yet here we are on screen. Mate, so. you do look like a welder's bench. I do. Jess yep. Spinks, how are you, mate? Yeah, very well. Good evening. Guys, tonight is going to be a really fun show. What we're going to go through, Panel Beaters is effectively our way of, I guess, integrating the audience yep. into what we do. We love doing that. And tonight you're going to be able to win some cash because we're going to put the Kia Stinger that we bought, the V6 one, the proper one. Oh, that we bought. Yes. That we, we own. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we're going to put it on a dyno. If you can guess the power output at the wheels and the torque at the wheels, you're going to win 250 bucks a pop. Mm. Lovely. So keep nice. your eye out for that. Before we have a look at that, because that, that is happening or has happened earlier today and we will reveal that uh, result, we're going to have some car, car news to yep. catch up on the latest car news. Plus, we're going to chat about some interesting topics as well. But before we go anywhere, let's see what is going on with that stinger on the dyno. So it is being loaded on as we speak. Yep. Uh, it's an interesting process. It the is. car basically rolls on the rear wheels will be on it because mm. it's rear a rear wheel drive. drive. Yeah. And Unlike uh, the new Commodore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair point. Very yes, cheeky, Jeff. <laughs> Had to say that. <laughs> now, guys, throughout the, today's show, we want you to get involved. We want you to send us questions. If there's anything you want to know, Absolutely. if there's anything we're talking about that you want to know about, uh, please let us know and get your entries in for the Stinger competition. Just leave it in the comments below and we will draw a winner at the end. It will be the closest person with the result. Now, let's kick things off with a controversial topic. <laughs> Stinger versus Commodore. We love controversy. We do. Yeah. Now, we drag raced these two just recently. And if you didn't see that, here's the video. So this is the all new Kia Stinger. We're gonna do a zero to 100 and a quarter mile here to see how quick it is. It has launch control, so we're gonna use that to activate it, switch all this stuff off. Okay, that's all disabled. Stick it into drive, foot on the brake, foot on the throttle. It'll say launch control active. There it is, and then away we go. Put that back on. Oh man, this thing is moving. Holy crap. All right, here we go, 160, 170. That is, that is, far out, that is really quick. Let's have a look at that, 4.8 seconds. That is insane. That is really impressive. So this is the Kia Stinger SI, the twin turbo V6. Straight out of the box there, 4.8 seconds using launch control. Right, so we've seen zero to 100 in the Kia Stinger. Let's see whether Old Faithful has what it takes to match the Stinger. So same story here again, we're going to put it into ESP competitive mode. So that's two taps of the button. Stick it down into sport. We're going to load up the throttle just a little bit and then sidestep the brake and that should be the quickest way to start it. Here we go. Boom, 179 k's an hour. Oh, have a look at that. 5.3. So that is about as fast as it gets for the Commodore. We've had 4.9 before, but that was in a manual and that was like once only. So 5.3 is damn quick, but still well short of 4.8 seconds in the Kia Stinger. There you go, <laughs> 4.8 seconds to 100. Not bad. I reckon if I'd have said to someone 10 years ago that you'd see a Kia doing zero to 100 in under five seconds, they would have said you were insane. Yeah, and that's against a claim of what, 5.1, yeah, yeah. so they're kind of sort of pessimistic in Porsche yeah. fashion. Yeah. But, and it, but you know, it's a car that's good around corners as yeah. well. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is that when we did the acceleration stuff, we, it wasn't like, oh, they got one 4.8 out no. of 50 tries. Yeah. We were just 4.9, mm. 4.9, 4.8. Yeah, really impressive stuff. It goes to show, as you said, it's the under-promise and over-deliver. You know, if you if you mm. go in low and you and you deliver even better than that, that's fantastic. And, you know, we're keen to hear from you. What do you think about the Stinger? Is, I mean, if you're a, a loyal Holden tragic, <laughs> the Stinger sure has yeah. to ruffle your feathers. Yeah. Mm. 
I'm are you going to are you going to buy one if you're a loyal Commodore fan? I, my gut instinct is no, but you know, tell us what you think. And it's worth because we, we don't know the results just yet of the Dino. What it's do you worth do? well, I, I do know, but you guys don't. <laughs> yeah, we don't. It's worth thinking about that. Two hundred and seventy-two kilowatts right. is the claim. Mm. How close are we getting to that on the Dino with mm. uh, with uh, the, the power of the rear wheels? Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Now, what have we been up to? Mm. We'd like uh, each month to cover the topics that we've been up to and what we've been doing. Uh, I recently went over to Portugal to drive something really interesting. Mm. Now, it was interesting because Jaguars have often been associated with old people and lawn bowls and stuff <laughs> like that. No offence to any old people listening. Or lawn bowlers. Exactly, yeah. all lawn bowlers. <laughs> yeah. um, but I jumped behind the wheel of the XJR 575. Mm. Who can tell me what 575 stands for? Uh, it's a stupid name, but what do you think it stands for? Um, like something to do with the output. Yeah. Yeah, so horsepower. horsepower, kilowatts? No? no, no ah. No. P.S. Yes, B.S. B.S. It's a lot like B.S. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a stupid thing, no. but it's um, Brit no, no offence, yeah, but it's yeah, some stupid easy. British thing. He's an Aussie. He's lived here yeah. long enough. Well, it's, right. it's a brilliant car, yes. Yeah? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant yeah. for one thing in particular, yeah. and it is the noise. Have a listen to this. This is the Jaguar. <laughs> it's a, it does sound unreal, doesn't it? It's not it? bad for a limo. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. So enough bragging about yeah, me yeah, over three hundred thousand yeah, dollars, but yeah. I, I can see a market for it. Trent, what have you been up to? Look, I'm glad I've you guys are sitting down because I've been doing absolutely nothing. I've That's been right. on holiday for a month, uh, but however, this week since I got back, I've been driving the new Jeep Grand Cherokee Limited. Now. This is a four-wheel drive we all want to love. We yep. really do want to love it. It's got a lot of heritage, it's got a lot of history, but I'll tell you the big news about the one I'm driving, it's not the one you'd buy. And you know why it's not the one you'd buy? Because it's petrol, and no matter what I did, no matter how gentle I was with it, I couldn't get it below 16 litres per 100 around right. town. So it is thirsty. Okay, Jess, Very. what do you think of the Grand Cherokee? Would you buy one? I like it, yeah, particularly yeah. with, you know, they've really improved it with the latest generation. Yeah. They've improved refinement, mm. interior quality is up. Yeah. Obviously, we want them to see it you know, go a little bit further with next gen. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, if you want a, an SUV that you know, can generally go off-road, yeah. but yeah, you go diesel. Well, they've got off-road chops. Jeep, obviously, yeah. it comes with a name. The there and back uh, guarantee we've spoken five about, which warranty. is five-year yeah. warranty. You would have read about that on the website. It, it's Jeep getting behind their product. We are the only country in the world that does that. Um, so that's a, it's a tangible move by Jeep to try to really back their product yep. and get some consumer confidence mm. back. And this new one is, is a good thing, it really is. But yeah, as Jez said, go with the diesel. Jess, now you've been doing something very interesting yes. in a very interesting place. Yes. What have you been driving and where was it? Well, an exclusively diesel power, but mm. Mercedes-Benz okay. X-Class. Ah, yes. A new dual cab view with a three-pointed yes. star in Chile. A little yes. jealous, if I'm honest. It was good, but we didn't get to drive across the Andes, which was a, was a bit disappointing. What did you think of it, is the key thing? <sighs> Interesting. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I love that now, pause. Just before you go on, this, this is an all-new Mercedes-Benz platform, isn't um, it? Of course. Well, oh. no. Uh, yes. Right, yeah, no. Exactly. I'm sure a lot of viewers will know that it's actually a Nissan Navara Correct. underneath, but we've got to be fair to Mercedes here because I have done extensive modifications yep. to it. You know, they've done a lot of revisions to the suspension, uh, it's an all new interior, a sheet metal, while it might look similar to a Navarra in some areas, it is actually all new. Well this is the thing, they've, uh, they've taken a platform and I know Trent and I love arguing about this but <laughs> the Navara as good as it is around town, yeah. aside from the stupid horn mm. that you hit every oh. time you do a U-turn. Yeah, every time. You... Um, that's <laughs> yeah. really annoying. All the six million points mm. of steering is fast, ratio. isn't it? It's fast, yeah. Um, <laughs> when you put load into the back of this thing, above about 600 kilos, the Navara really falls apart. You're hitting bump stops and, and all that sort of stuff. The X-Class, I would hope they fixed. Okay, the... so we, we didn't test it with any load in the back. Oh, so, uh, so that so is that is that is a caveat. But, you know, in the drive that we did have, and it was fairly extensive, along yeah. a, like a full day, the Roy quality promises to be best in class. Okay. You know, it was really supple. Yeah. Best yeah. in X class. I think that the point <laughs> to make here too, and this leads into the pricing, is okay, I agree with you, the Navara is not great with that much weight in the back. Now we don't know what the pricing is going to be for X class. We're thinking seventy something for the most expensive four cylinder which means the V6 is going to probably be more expensive. Yeah. Now, I, we've got to find out whether people are going to pay that for it. However, I would argue that people who do pay that much won't be using it for work. No. So it won't matter what it carries in the this tray anyway. This is the thing. I have seen endless numbers of FX4 Rangers yeah. on the road. That is a car that is purely 
a sticker pack. Sticker pack, exactly. It's indulgence only, mm -hmm. and people pay a stupid number for yeah. that. And these are the same people that come and, um, no offence to any tradies, <laughs> come and rip, rip you off when you're <laughs> yeah. when you come and earning too your much house. money. Did, but now, speaking of being ripped off, did you ask Jez if you drove the V6? Jez, how was the V6? <laughs> I think that's the one we've been waiting for. So, we didn't get to drive the V6. Oh, great. Good, um, yeah, great. So, apparently, so it's still in final development phase, mm. even though they announced this car what, two years yeah, ago. Yeah, so it's um, only due um, shortly. Yeah, so, extended midnight, but look, yeah. so, we drove the X250D, which right. is a twin turbo uh, four cylinder yes. diesel, yep. which is actually a Renault Nissan. Um, unit, yes. so that's not ideal because again, you kind of you you know buying the Mercedes yep. badge and not exactly. getting Mercedes yep. uh, engineering necessarily, uh, and you know the four cylinder twin turbo. You know, look, it's not bereft of torque, but yep. you know you do feel the weight of the yeah. X class. It's yep. about two hundred kilos heavier than a Navara yep. because of all that you know, extra sound deadening. Yes. And it's the Mercedesness. The yeah, Germans. they've added. So, but we did get a, a ride in the passenger seat of the V6, <laughs> and <laughs> look, it, it, it is going to get. Pretty pricey that model, yeah, it is, but absolutely. it but it is going to be the pick for grunt. Okay, well everyone on social media <laughs> is commenting that it is just a Nissan. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I would uh, we would yeah. love to hear yeah. from anyone that wants to buy one. Are you one of those people that um, gets paid very well to fix yeah. uh, pipes and stuff, yeah. um, <laughs> especially at my and house? Is the, Ford, is the Ford Ranger just a Mazda BT50? Exactly. Let or us is the know. Mazda BT50 a Ford Ranger? We want to know what you think. <laughs> yeah. Now let's cross back to the Stinger. They should be in the process now of getting it onto the dyno itself. So let's see how that is going. So there you go. They are checking stuff. Mm. Uh, when they dyno a car, just mm. FYI, they've got to have a giant fan in front of it, mm. an extraction fan as well. They're going to hook up things to the engine. And hopefully some straps so it doesn't well, leap off the dyno. That's the thing that yeah. always scares me when yeah. watching a car on a <laughs> I dyno. Know. I don't like standing in front of it mm. because it doesn't feel right having a car <laughs> yes. doing 200 k's yeah. an hour. Yeah. But not, not going moving. anywhere, yeah, that's Unless right. Unless you're doing a burnout. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which yeah. we would never do in any no, of the cars we own. that's absolutely childish. Yeah. Um, absolutely childish. <laughs> now, we have also something interesting right here in the studio with us. Now, if you're a fan of Korean cars, especially Hyundai's, the i30N is due around next year. And we have a top secret car right here, a pre-production i30N that was wheeled into our studio under the cover of darkness. Yeah. And uh, it looks bloody stunning, well, don't you think? Does it? I haven't seen it. Yeah, right. me neither. Yeah, you haven't so seen it. Yeah, so okay. host to the show, but we won't show you any of the cars. Yeah. That are You'll in the get studio. to see it's it. Very shortly. special. Yeah. You get to Come see along, it. Come along, guys. We just won't show you anything. And we will switch it on as well, yeah. so you can have a listen to that thing too. Now, let's have a look at some car news. There's some interesting things that have been going on in the car industry, and one in particular that's very relevant to Australia. Now, our international viewers may not find this uh, like interesting yeah. because it, it won't make any sense to them but in Australia dual cab utes have been going gangbusters and last year best selling car was best selling car was a the Toyota Hilux and in the month of October Hilux won Ford Ranger 2 again you never would have thought that had happened now if you're watching this from the United States you'll be laughing at us talking about our dual cab utes at $70,000 price points because things like Ford F150 yep. Nissan Titan which we think might be available globally in a right-hand drive platform. Toyota Tundra and all those types of vehicles, Ram 1500, um, they are unbelievably affordable in the States and dual cab utes here aren't cheap. So I think we've been copying a bit of a raw deal with our yes. pickup trucks, as, as the people around the rest of the world call them. And I'd love to see stuff like this, like the Nissan Titan, available in Australia. Yeah, definitely. I saw a, a Ford F-150 Raptor on the road oh, today. And how good, God, do, they look, so how good. good do they look? Yeah. And the Titan looks good as well. It does it's look not, good. It's not short of a, yeah. a decent design. Does look now, good. we've got a question here from Paul, yeah. not me. Yeah. Um, that I says. Just messaging it with you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Trent said that people pay seventy k for a Ford dual cab yeah. Ute. So they'll probably pay for the X class. Shouldn't the comparison be? Will they pay seventy k and over for a Navara? It's an interesting. Well, one. yeah, that's a very good way of putting it. Well, the reason I used that example was because the list price of a, a Ranger Wild Track, for example, takes it up into the sixties, and then mm -hmm. you've got on roads and any options. But that's actually a good point because if people perceive it to be a Mercedes Benz. No problem, I think. If they perceive it to be a Nissan with a Mercedes-Benz badge, well, then that's a good question. Yeah, well, look, if I can, if I can add to that, you, you know, I did, I did talk to him at the status and I did ask him, 
specifically, you know, whether you know this is going to justify, mm. you know, the extra price. And I said, look, it absolutely, yeah. in their eyes, it, it deserves the premium right. because we don't know what that premium will be. <laughs> but you know, going back, they they have done a lot of work on this car. You know, the the, mm. the, the front and rear axles um, from Mercedes. Yeah. They basically took the Navaras off and they've put widened uh, tracks on it. Yeah. So that's great for stability yeah. and actually for trade practicality as well because it, that's true. The, the gap between the wheel arches is ah, greater than the Navaras. For loading and pallets, guess what? Yeah. An Aussie size pallet yeah. fits the next class. Yeah. And yeah. that's, yeah. yeah. that's going to be an interesting head to head. Yes. Yeah. Now, question here from Michael. Thank you for writing in, Michael. Um, how heavy is the Stinger? Well, that's a good question. If you guys can guess, because I've got the number here in front of me, I'm not going to let you look at it. 1,584 kilos. The, the Stinger? Yeah. God, that's just <laughs> <your> <laughs> Rose-coloured glasses. Uh, <laughs> 1.8 tonnes. Yeah. Okay, so depending on which version you choose, mm. uh, the four-cylinder, yeah. 1693. So that is... I was uh, closer than you blokes. Well, hold on. No, we're about that's to get to the one that people are going to buy. Okay. Which that's is the one with no interior. Yeah, right. That's right. So you want, you want the V6. <laughs> 1780. Okay, good. Now, yeah, to put no that into context... Is it, do I get cash for that? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> sterling, pound, whatever pound it is. Pound sterling. Um, yeah. 1780 kilos for the V6. Right. So about 20 kilos heavier than the Commodore. Mm. This yeah. is not too bad. Yeah. Um, now, next topic. One that just popped up before we went live with this show is Jeep. They mm. have just released a radical looking new concept. It's a production car, mm. and they're calling it the Wrangler. Mm. But it's oh. funny, it looks just like the old one. <laughs> yeah. And the one before it. And the one before it, and the um. one before it, back to 1955. It's, it, it probably does need an update, much like the Defender that we saw Land Rover update recently. <laughs> um, but really, when it comes to factory-capable off-road vehicles, the Wranglers, with the 70 Series Toyota, it's about the best of the old school that's left, really. Well, I've still got fond memories of taking one across. Yeah. The yeah. Simpson, yep. I mean, it's great. It's just... On road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If this one is to live up to the old standard, it has to be awful on road. Okay. Because Good. they are. Yes, I okay. so have so to you're be make that brief. Well, they are. They are making. You know, they're saying they are going to you know, improve that. You know, yes. Better interior, more aerodynamic. Yeah. Yep. Or the, you know, you have to, you know, the aerodynamics a, of a brick. How do you make so. a box more aerodynamic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can you send it downhill, I think? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. Um, a question here from Carl. What boost is the Stinger running stock? Ah, good question, Carl. Now, this came as a result of an earlier dyno we did with the car, and we know that it's running 12 PSI. Now, so what's that in bar? Do what's we know? under one bar? Yeah, that's low. That's mm. not much. That's very low. So can you imagine when the tuners get hold of this, mm. take that little ECU out, mm. pop it into their computers and go, right, we'll just wind that mm. right up. Crank it up to 30 PSI. You can get 300 at the wheels. Easy. Yeah. So, yeah. What about improving the sound, though? Yeah. Well, yeah. Is there optional say, exhaust here? Yeah. It's coming. My right. my word is, yeah. uh, and I won't say where your, this is your, from. Your word? Or? My, <laughs> he's, he's got his ear, ear to the ground. <laughs> December. Okay. But it's going to be retrofitable. So if you've already got one delivered, congrats. Uh, okay. uh, you can get it retrofitted. Yep. And it will sound good, apparently. I and reckon the Stinger, um, this is a big call, but I reckon it's going to be the tuner's sweetheart. I reckon tuners Jeez. and the aftermarket are going to go really hard at this car. I think yes. they are. Are they going to get a V8 for it? Though? Probably not. I think it'll be coming. <laughs> yeah. um, now, next topic here we have is Formula... Oh, no, not Formula 1. No, not Formula 1. Formula that's an e. e. Yeah, that's an E. Right. Yeah, for electric. So before yeah. you close you the window and <laughs> sign off, <laughs> what do we think of it? I think it's rubbish. Okay. Now, everyone's <laughs> rushing towards it. The reason we want to talk about it is because manufacturers are going towards it in increasing numbers. I don't mm. know about you blokes, but I've tried to watch a race. Yes. Now... There is no noise, yeah. um, and they've got some great drivers. They've got XF1 drivers like mm. Nick Heidfeld there driving around. Um, there's no noise, and they have to swap cars halfway through because the battery packs go flat. Now, I know it's the way of the future, but come on. Motor racing is supposed to be a visceral thing. It's supposed to be noisy. noisy. It's a, yeah, you're supposed to be able yeah. to feel them go past you, let alone hearing it. And, of course, you watch these Formula E's, and there's 25 people in the stands. That set tread off, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I you have an opinion amazing. on that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, do you want me to tell you how I feel about it? <laughs> yeah, Formula is an interesting one. I don't, I don't know. We'll, we'll watch it. But Jez, a lot of Jez manufacturers, is not into it. He's not into it. A lot of it. Well, I'm, I'm, onto Yeah, it. I'm an F1 tragic, mm. unfortunately. And, well, yeah. Yeah. But it's interesting, you know, you know Nissan... Yeah. They they went they've jumped into it, but yep. their alliance partner Renault has decided, yep. yeah, mm. no thanks, we'll mm. uh, we'll we'll kind of focus Just on that one with Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Hey, guess who's actually in it? Mahindra. Mahindra in it. Yeah, yeah exactly. So yeah. the Indians are loving that mm. type of thing. With the pickup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting. What about the aerodynamics <laughs> on that thing? Um, <laughs> so on the topic of Formula E, Tesla. That's another one that's come up. Trent, you and I have had mixed experiences mm. with the Model X mm. and have fallen out of love a little bit. Yeah. 
And the problem for me, at least, was that um, you know, with, with house prices in Sydney, Expensive. you could build on the, the land in between some of those panel gaps. Yeah, mixed um, is a good word because mixed is the panel gap yeah. and build quality. I, look, Isn't I think disappointing. Yeah, look, I think the Model X is stupid. I, I just don't think it makes any sense. Uh, I'm not sure that an electric SUV at the moment makes any sense. Um, and it's too expensive for my money. However, the bigger issue with Tesla is whether they can actually make any money. We, we sat down with the boss of Mercedes-Benz about 12 months ago, and I asked him what he thought about Tesla, and he said to me, we respect what they're doing and we respect how they're going about things. And then he looked at me and he smiled and he said, if I could build cars and I didn't have to make money, I could do anything. Mm. So as a veiled swipe at the fact that Elon Musk isn't making any money yet, he's pouring money in from elsewhere, and at the moment the model that they have is not making the money, and I don't know, Jez, whether they can match the demand that they claim to have for the Model 3. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a big call they're making on it, but, you know, I've got a lot of time for Tesla. You know, there's a lot of brand credibility. Yeah, that's although true. They've built up in a, in a very short amount of time. You know? yeah. so, uh, the commission uh, sounds like it's good yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> Cha -ching. I mean, they, but they are, they are going up against car manufacturers that have been around for 100 years. So for them to do what they've done so quickly... Car makers that have been around yeah. for, you know, over yeah. 100 years yeah. that are now following Tesla. You know, well, Mercedes, that's a good point. it's EQ yeah. range, yeah. Yep. e-tron with Audi, yeah. BMW yeah. i range. Yeah. So Look, putting their manufacturing things aside, they're actually doing an incredible job. They, that, and they have spurred everyone to get on with yeah, it they have. and that's that's what I love seeing question here from Jacqueline about um, Tesla I'd like to get a Tesla Model S but can't afford it what can we expect from the Model 3 and what will we miss out on with this model well, you've now driven it, I was you? about to say I was lucky enough to uh, head over to California where I had a chance to drive the car itself and the car, the program manager for the Model 3 is an Aussie bloke. Oh, so wow. a bloke that's been through the, you know, the ranks of other car companies and, and is now working on this product. So he's been able to call it his own. The car is fantastic. Mm. So it is, isn't full aluminium like the, the other models, but it doesn't compromise in terms of range. It'll still do uh, good acceleration as well. And while you do miss out on some of the things, I actually quite like the slim design of the screen in the centre. Mm. Everything's there. And the cool stuff is like the mirrors. So you, is the smart Tesla to buy a base Model yes, 3. Yes, absolutely. That's the smart yeah. one to buy. I'd maybe wait for the all-wheel drive because yeah. the rear-wheel drive will have that inherent issue yeah. of traction once they wind it up a bit. Yeah. So the all-wheel drive is the one that you want. But smart tech, like on the steering wheels, you change the, uh, the wing mirrors yeah. on, on the wheel. Everything's consolidated but not marked because that means in the future, if they build levitating cars, your steering wheel controls can do the mirrors and levitation. <laughs> is it going to have ludicrous mode? I would hope so. They wouldn't say anything, but I'm certain it would. Yeah, it would have to. Um, okay, next item on the news is something from Japan. Mm. WRX STI. Yeah. What does that stand for, by the way? We had a thing uh, before. Subaru Technica International. Mm. Okay. What does WRX stand for? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. I don't know the answer something. to that. Yeah, um, so it's out. Yeah. What do we think of it? I have an issue with WRX now, mm -hmm. so I'm of the generation that grew up with them as a halo performance car that everybody wanted to own, all-wheel drive, accessible performance, easily tunable, all those things. I would argue that the new WRX isn't hardcore enough, which means that the STI, in terms of the way it feels mm -hmm. to drive, is positioned where I think the WRX should be, which then means there's a gap where the STI really should be. I know they're still capable, but I just think they're a little soft, and I know that brands like Subaru have to do that because they have to appeal to non-enthusiasts as well. But just for me, it just doesn't quite hit the mark. Yeah, but this WX generation, I think, is better than the previous generation, that's a which fair was, point. Def was definitely soft. Yeah, that's a fair um, point. But you know, it still goes pretty hard mm. on the road, mm. particularly, yeah. Uh, yeah. and yeah. not bad on a, on, a, on a track. But I think that. I don't know, with Subaru, I think it's almost like they're just caught in a bit of a no-man's land at the yeah. moment with WRX, you know, kind of sticking, you know, a bit of a wild child days of old. Yeah. Or, you know, but they've also got to try and mature for yeah. the, you know, the Golf GTI kind well, of generation. Well, Golf, good point with Golf. Now, this is the problem that I think STI has. You test drive an STI, similar money, you say to someone, or you could have a Golf R. If you want a competent all-rounder that you have to drive every day, which one are you recommending? I'm telling people to buy a Golf R. Well, here's the thing. We, we actually had the spec R, STI WRX, the, the top spec, against a Golf R. Yeah. And we tried to do 0 to 100 in, in the WRX. Mm. And I, I felt bad at the end of it because <laughs> by the time we were done like with were it... were beating on it. Yeah, yeah. like I, I varied my launches from uh, slipping clutch to sort of dumping clutch. Mm. And it, it wasn't overly impressive in terms of its time. But the Golf R, on the yes. other hand... You have to hear this thing, yeah. it, it's, it's great. So can we play the Golf R doing zero to 100?
<laughs> Did you hear that? Yeah, it's unreal. It's committee How good does it sound? 4.6 seconds yeah. to 100. That is stupid. Absolutely stupid. Now, we've got a couple of questions here to run through. Richard asks, I bought a 3.3 GT Stinger. Richard, hat off to yeah, you. Good one, <laughs> um, I'm running it on 91 unleaded as per the manual. Will running it on 95 or 90, 98 make any real difference? Also, have the bimodal exhaust ordered, which is great. Yep. Uh, will a dyno tune be needed with the new set of pipes? Now, firstly, on the, on the fuel, if it says you can run it on 91, it's fine. But that also means that it's been tuned to run poorly mm. on 91, which means when you stick 98 in it, yep. it's going to run a little bit better. So if you want to terrify someone, stick 98 in it, run a few tanks through, and give it a crack. I would run 98 on it. I run 98. Yeah, I run 98 on everything. You get the performance Especially benefits. The performance cars, yeah. If you're getting the exhaust, yes, it's going to make it sound good. But I have a feeling, and Kia hasn't officially said this, but putting an exhaust on that thing, making it a bit more free flowing, mm. will mean one thing: mm. more power. More power, exactly. So uh, good on you, Richard. We will let you know because we will put the exhaust on our car as soon as we get the chance as well. Um, now, question here from Paul. Do you think the Is Hyundai no, mate, <laughs> not a question don't Paul. make a right? Oh, yeah, okay. um, do you think the Hyundai brand has changed its image enough to challenge Toyota, Mazda, etc.? Do you think the i30 ha N has the capability? It's a good question. Well, look, yeah, well, Tony Crawford, uh, yeah. colleague, he, he has driven it. Was very yes. excited about it. We haven't driven it yet, so we can't comment on that yet. Mm. Uh, looking forward to driving it, but. I, I think we can say that Hyundai is at a position now oh, yeah. where they're ready to take the next step. You know, they've they've gone through a process of you know improving their regular cars. That you know, so they've got a good model range. Yep. The image is there, so they've got the value. Uh, they've got the long warranty. Now it's time to see if they can deliver a true driver's car. Well, we know from that small hatch mega test we did, mm. the i30, the, ba the the normal i30, not the N, is as close to a Golf as anything yeah. ever has been in that segment now. Not quite there, but it's as close to it. And I think in terms of perception with the warranty you mentioned and the sales figures, Hyundai's already starting to challenge established mm. Japanese manufacturers. And just another point on that as well, you know, Hyundai is in motorsport. At yeah, last. exactly. You know, yeah, the WRC yeah. with an yeah. i20, yeah. not an i30. True. You know, but for years, you know, we've been waiting for, you know, uh, a driver's car from Hyundai. I mean, you know, the Tiburon Force New actually wasn't a bad thing. Like, that was going back a few years ago. Really? Um, <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jess. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to have you. Doors over there. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they, you know, having that motorsport, you know, that means that they've got yeah. people involved that actually are out to, draw, you know, build a bloody good car. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, last piece on the news here. Now, this is something that absolutely blew me away. I had the chance to spend the day with the guys from Bosch. Now, I know Bosch from uh, washing machines. Yes. We have a, a Bosch washing Does machine. Does it handle well? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. What's it's, the ESC like? Oh, it's, it's great. <laughs> so Bosch you don't have a dishwasher as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bosch is a company that works, uh, works on stability control systems for cars. And they, they do a, like there's a lot of cars mm. on the market with their systems. You just yep. may never know about it. Um, but they will one day hopefully save your life if they need to. They've now developed a system called Trailer Safety Control. And what this does, it takes the, the advancements we've seen so far with ESP and trailers one step further. It allows you to retrofit an ESP-esque type system to your caravan. Yep. What they did, they demonstrated this to us. And, and what blew me away the most is that they performed a lane change at 100 kilometres an That's hour. That's unbelievable. Now, the car had all these outriggers and all this sort of stupid stuff in on it, which it didn't work. you'll see in a second. <laughs> and they said they had to replace the pads because while tuning the system, yeah. the thing had almost rolled several times. Yeah. And it was like nothing happened. And I'm like, oh, is that all? Yeah. And then when they showed it with it off, yeah. it was just all remarkable. Shot, so yeah. uh, have a look at this footage. It is seriously impressive. With over a million caravans on the road in Australia, when one of these things gets out of shape, it gets out of shape properly, which is why it's important to know what to do when that happens. But Bosch has taken that out of the equation with a system called Trailer Safety Control. And today we're at the Australian Automotive Research Centre to put it to the test and see just how well it works. With over a million caravans on the road in Australia, when one of these things gets out of shape, it gets out of shape properly, which is why it's important to know what to do when that happens. But Bosch has taken that out of the equation with a system called Trailer Safety Control. And today we're at the Australian Automotive Research Centre to put it to the test and see just how well it works.
We've seen today that this technology works extremely well. Even at crazy speeds, we shouldn't be doing those type of lane changes. To read more about it, head to caradvice.com and don't forget to subscribe. Like from inside. Yeah, you got a thumbs up. Okay, Trent, walk us through some of this stuff. So basically, basically here you've got what they call the N, the N system, which allows you to mess around with all this stuff. And if you hit custom. These are all the different things you can adjust. So you've got engine and rev matching and the electronic LSD and the exhaust sound. So you can see here it's on sport. But it allows you to customise it and sort of, it, it looks to me like a sporty car. This is the kind of stuff that you see in expensive European Look at that steering cars. wheel. Yeah, it looks like a sport steering wheel. End button, you can mess around with your drive modes here. I okay. just think it feels like a sport. Trent, there's, there's just one thing I'm yeah. interested in here. Does this thing backfire? Can okay. you please Let's give it a, a crack? Are you ready? That sounds unreal. Mate. But this is a Hyundai. I mean, we've got to remind people. Yeah, exactly. They've got to remind people that this is a Hyundai. Mate, this this is some serious stuff. I cannot wait to drive this yeah. and and really just give it an absolute crack. Can I crack. Give it one more rep? Yes, mate, yeah. do it. That oh, sounds great. That is too that good. Great. That is it. too good. If you have any questions about this, folks, please let us know. But now it's time to figure out how much power our Stinger is making. So if you haven't got your votes in yet, please enter them below. We want to know how much power it makes at the rear wheels and how much torque it makes. Enter below in the comments. It is going on the dyno right now. Guys, <laughs> can you believe that? That Stinger just made just under 234 kilowatts yeah. of power at the wheels. Now, what does it make at the engine? 272. Wow. So, it doesn't lose a great deal. I no, I think no. Uh, that's or pretty good. Kia or, has yeah. been yeah. modest with yeah. the figure. Telling um, porky pies, I but think. But let's put that into perspective. This same dyno had a stock C63 on there yep. that made 20 kilowatts of power more. Wow. This is a dyno that people have described as being savage. So it's a dyno that, that doesn't tell people. Doesn't do pies. any favours. Yeah, so exactly. that is some incredible stuff. As soon as we get the exhaust on our Kia Stinger, we are going to stick it on the dyno again to see what happens with it. Um, now, before we move on, I uh, just want to run through a couple more questions here. Dave asks, compared to the GTI, is the Golf R2 heavy? That's an interesting one. No, look, for me, no. The GTI being front-wheel drive does exhibit some of the characteristics of a front-wheel drive car, not like front-wheel drive cars of old. However, in that class, a vehicle that you can drive hard on a wet road, on a racetrack, take it to a track day, and drive it normally every day to work, the Golf R is about as good as it gets. Well, it, it really is. Comes back to that sort of all-rounder status. Yeah, you know, it does. All, you know, all yeah. weather capability. Yeah. You know, and it's still, look, with this generation of the Golf R, you know, the last one we would have said buy a GTI all the way. Yeah. Yeah. This time I can actually say, you know, it yeah. is, you know, it's, look, a GTI is still great. Still, yeah, still awesome worth it, car. But the Golf R is a, is a properly good Especially model. with launch control when you can smoke <laughs> almost As anything. As you heard before, exactly. yeah, exactly. Um, question here from uh, Mario. He says, what do you guys think about the new Camry that's being released here, the six-cylinder uh, version? Good question, Mario. I like the new Camry. Um, we spoke about this the other day on the radio show that we do where we said it's vastly different to the old one. So a lot of people who like the current Camry that they know might not like the new one. But I think the new one looks mm. really good. I think it's got a lot of Lexus about it. it That's looks not quite a bad stylish. thing. No. Yeah, not a bad thing at all. And I think it looks good. 
As long as it's more exciting to drive. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. that's, that's all I care about. There will yeah, be somewhere true. for your bowls yeah. kit. Yeah, that's uh, true. In the, in, the, in the boot or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, that brings us to the end of the show. We've got uh, a whole number of people that have guessed uh, very close to that number. So we're going to go through those results and get in touch with you. So please make sure that, uh, that your details are there. We'll be able to, to find who you are. Big Brother is watching. Yeah. <laughs> um, we really appreciate you guys tuning in today. We've, uh, we've had a stack of fun yeah, doing this. It's, it's, it's our first attempt at this panel show. We're going to be doing it each month on a Wednesday at 8 p.m. So first Wednesday of each month yep. at 8 p.m. Make sure you have your questions ready. We're going to give away some cash with each episode as well. And if there's anything you'd love to see in the studio, mm. is it the Let Ford Ranger know. Raptor? Let is us it know. Trent's combi. <laughs> which I've sold. Which I've sold. Okay, I can bring my bicycle in or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Ride don't worry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if there's any questions you have, and make sure you subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the channel. You'll get reminders. Facebook as well, set yourself reminders, and also Periscope too. Uh, again, appreciate you guys watching. And uh, if there's nothing else, guys, yeah. I might go see if I can take... Oh, by the way, yeah. that, I forgot to say yeah. this. That's a pre-production Yeah, I but is it registered? Yes, but it's a pre-production. Well, I'm still again. taking it home. No, we're you not You can have the to. Civic Type R that I left outside. Uh, okay, that sounds right. <laughs> Thank you guys for, for watching. Thanks for joining us, See guys. Us. Cheers.